Yo, what up guys? It's your boy Dawa the Radical Gamer and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Literature Club. Sorry, I lost my voice for a second. So last last time on Doki Doki, uh, we basically left off like on the third day of being here at the Literature Club. So I guess we're gonna just continue our story where we left off. So another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi Donovan. Yo, Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? Mm, no thanks. Eh? That does not like you at all. I mean, I can go for some- uh, I can go for a snack. Well, why not? I have my reasons, I guess. <laughs> uh, why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Uh, uh, why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just wanted to look at it. Uh, uh. Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. She then turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. Oh, okay. She's trying to steal my money. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How do you even know? It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to, coming to the cl club room. Now that's big brain. <laughs> so either you're not hungry and want an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all of your money so that I would lend you some. But there's, but there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so the only leaves the one option. Wah! I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Dang. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? I didn't notice that she was listening in. She's being nosy. <laughs> her face is in her book, as always. Uh, uh I, I wasn't listening or anything. I was just... Some, it was just something in my book. Yuri, tell Donovan to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy that you, what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Ah, uh, did I just... I didn't mean that, jeez. <laughs> I got too absorbed into my book. <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. <laughs> Retribution. That! Still coming from you, Sayori. I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But, but, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. I mean, touche. <laughs> so I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Out of nowhere, something smacks Yuri in the face and tumbles onto the desk. She then is in a concussion and never recovers. Oh my god, it actually did smack. like, plop. Yeah. Ow. What was... Eh? A, a cookie! Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Siori glances around. It, is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. <laughs> Retribution. Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> N Natsuki... That's so nice of you! Wow, she straight up smacked you in the face. <laughs> I'm so happy! Sayori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. You're overreacting. <laughs> Sayori, Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good! <laughs> mm. Sayori suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue! <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Nats Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, your lips. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I need to clear my throat. I'm telling you, man, this reading is killing me. 
Ah, uh, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. But yours is chocolate. Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Wow. Fine. Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. <laughs> Siori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki and wraps her arms around her. Ah, uh, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie's still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Sayori off her. Oh. <laughs> Sayori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Wow. H hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. <laughs> Yuri and I laugh as well. Wow. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori? Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica is in, in the club room. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. That was a weird voice. I like mixed two of the voices. <laughs> yeah, I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She's probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. I mean... I I'm looking at all of them right now and... I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, people have their opinions. Uh, that's true. Excuse me. Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry. I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. But boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Ah, uh, never mind. Why should why should look at me? <laughs> what held you up anyway? Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes that makes no sense though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must have not heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I was I wasn't aware you played music music as well, Monica. Uh, I don't really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play something for us, Monica. That's. Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! Ugh, I, I, I hate these voices. <laughs> I feel like the worst one I've given was Sayori's, because Sayori's is just like too derpy and squeaky. But I'm trying, okay, I'm trying. That sounds cool. Ugh. <laughs> I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Donovan. And legit, she bumped into all of them and they all disintegrated. Wow. <laughs> Monica smiles sweetly. Ah. I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Uh, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. Just, uh... Siori getting abused by a cupcake. I mean, not a cupcake, a cookie. <laughs> I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. Yeah, that, that'd be pretty weird. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Siori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. Hey Yuri. Eh? Okay, so we're gonna talk to Yuri again. Cause I think we're getting to know her really well. So, uh... I suddenly noticed that Yuri is reading a different book from the one we've been reading together. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. In to, in to interrupt. Ah, uh, no. I was just... I was just waiting for you. Oh, if that's the case, why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's... let's. Who said... He could have just said, sure. Why... Yes, let's. That... Okay, whatever. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my... Make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. 
Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. If only, like, if only I could actually see all this happening instead of just reading it and using my imagination. Oh well. <laughs> I'm going. I'm going to plug this in at the te teacher's desk. Teachers. Teacher's desk. And then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Wow. How romantic. <laughs> okay, may I, okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Ah, I might as well walk with you. Yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Hmm, where are you two off to? Eh? Uh, we're just... Yuri was going to make some tea, so... I suddenly realized how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Okay, nothing else. Ah, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. It's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? Hey, you, okay, Monica, you know what? Mind your own business, all right? It's between me and her, all right? You chill out. That's... Monica, please mind your own business for once. Ooh, okay. I'll, I'll say this in my head, but Yuri, calm down. What do you want to tell me? There's something wrong with helping... With helping involve Donovan in club activities. Uh, eh? My mouth gapes. I... I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Hmm. Then let's go, Donovan. Uh, Yuri quickly exits the room, and I follow. Jeez. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I, I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri? I just... Something about the way she said that. It made me feel so... Irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri. I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but it's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Aw, this is nice music. D Donovan, how come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because nothing that you do is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions, and we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Ah, uh, no. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend, you say? Ah, uh, um. Yuri lifts her head. Donovan, I really like being friends with you. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that. But I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walk to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. Aww. Aww, that was nice. Alright, we're back to, We're back to the piano music. Alright. <clears throat> there we go. My speaking voice is here now. Donovan, do you like oolong tea? Ah, yeah. Anything's fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. She drops it on herself and shrinks her clothes. <laughs> now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything? <laughs> In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. She's like really making tea. She could have just like bought a tea from like a vending machine or something. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I wasn't doing a bit of thinking. I was doing a bit of thinking. Not wasn't. I was. And I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around anyway. Ah. That's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. Did I have a voice crack? What the heck was that? I was like, don't, pu don't push yourself too much. My god. You're always worrying about me, Donovan. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watched Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. 
Donovan, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Eh? Why is that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can reel with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have a back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder where that is. It's most li likely because of my... Uh... My... my your posture, right? <laughs> your posture, definitely. Not because uh, you have a lot of weight on you. From something. I'm going to leave it to you guys to fill in the rest. <laughs> Always hunch over like that while reading? Yes. I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. Ah, I have some chocolates as well. Ooh. It's a big... It's, it's a big... A, it's a bag of small chocolate candies and I, that I kept hidden from Sayori's candy radar. <laughs> I take it, since it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. Ooh, big moves. I can't see too well. Oh, Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. Oh ho 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 shoulders, oh my god. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup, holding it with my hands. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Wow. <laughs> Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only assume the world around her has faded away. I use all my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. The teacup then falls in between my legs, and I can never have children. <laughs> ah, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, that's... That's okay, I won't take any. Eh, are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then I might get smudges on the pages. Ah, you're right. I mean, yeah, she does have a point. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Ah. Look at her eyes. Wow, she is so mesmerizing. <laughs> I like the particles flying um, around her too. That's that's a nice touch, because it's like right over the window, so like it's like the light particles coming in. That's a good touch. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Oh my god, she's touching me. Well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it in my mouth. Then I take another chocolate, and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if this situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop there, or stop here. Oh no. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Why would I do this? <laughs> like, she didn't ask for this. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. She starts having a mental breakdown. Alright. Did... Did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Uh, um... Donovan? S sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh, that's... Well... Y you were just helping. That's something that f friends do. Right? I mean... Not really in this kind of context, but... Yeah? That's all it was. Yeah. Then... You don't need to stop or anything. Oh my god. I, I see. The situation has gotten really tense. She's legit asking us to do it again. <laughs> Yuri tries to return to the book, but I can tell just by her expression that even she can't focus now. My heart is pounding. 
I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers, but this time Yuri's eyes meet mine. Oh no, this is awkward. How did he even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her, her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breaths. I'm gonna be real, I, I thought that was another word. I did not think that was breaths. I'm gonna continue. I raise my arm. Ah, like before, Yuri parts her lips, but it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. Oh my god, this is... Okay, everyone. Oh, Jesus. Wah. Uh, uh. Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> she legit, she legit messed up the moment. Oh no. <laughs> Monica, why? Donovan, can you help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. Oh, we were. She was gonna make out with me. <laughs> I'll. I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the tea cups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Aw oh, man. Who should I show my poem to first? <sighs> Why not talk to Yuri? Cause it's already awkward enough. <laughs> Let's talk to Yuri. Oh god, hello. Let's see what we've written for today. Yuri stares at my poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Donovan. This one might even be better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why you did a good job explaining. May or maybe that's why you did a good job explaining. That's, that's how you're supposed to say that. I really wanted to try giving it more imagery. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine, take your time. Yuri breathes, breaths, breathes, and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer the patient. I've offered that patience to her. I cannot read. Yeah, just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. I really only write to my, for myself. And besides, people will just laugh at me. Why? You're really good. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh. Even your close friends? Yuri doesn't respond to that. Oh, she doesn't have friends. I wonder why. Oh, oh. I wonder why. Oh my god. Donovan, you're an In game, Donovan, you're an idiot. Alright, clearly, she doesn't have friends. <laughs> anyway, do you want to share the poem you wrote for today? Yeah, I do. If it's with you. The raccoon. Alright. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilty snack. I just realized how long this is. How long is this? Oh my god. Alright. My attention was caught by the scuttering... The scuttering of a... Scuttering? I can't read cursive. Scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an unordinary human. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. My subconscious, well aware of the consequences. He's gonna... The raccoon's never gonna leave now. Well aware that a raccoon... A raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. Yeah, exactly. The, en the enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity. Oh, the bread, my hunger, curiosity. The raccoon, an urge. The moon increments its face and reflects that much, that much more light off of my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited. Or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. 
Even time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic Parlovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. Huh. That sounds... Sounds kind of weird. That was a... Okay, that was a weird one. It was almost like... Because I feel like the message to that was like... She has some sort of like... Hobby or like... Like... Addiction? I don't know. To me, that sounds like some sort of addiction. Um... I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can begin to imagine what this poem is about. That's right. It's a bit closer to my preferred writing style. Using that poem as a canvas to express vivid imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yeah, if I take it at a face value when I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I'm wanting to express that the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. In those sorts of things, I'm un usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Why do you keep them to yourself? B because they're embarrassing and people would make fun of me. Don't you have anything like that, Donovan? Well, I watch anime, but everyone knows that. And I'm not really embarrassed by it, but I do get laughed at, so... You know what? We're all the- yeah, yeah, I guess I do. I feel like everyone has a little something like that. The best, the best we could do is respect each other and our individualities. Even if it's difficult sometimes, and some things make us uncomfortable. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I would probably hate myself. I, I might be ranting a little bit now, but I'm glad that you're a good listener. You're good at a lot of things. Writing, listening, Putting chocolates in my mouth, flirting. Hey, what can I say, Yuri? What can I say? <laughs> there really, there really are many people like you, Donovan. Th that's exaggerating a little bit. It's just how I feel. I never thought I would feel so comfortable sharing my writing, but now I almost feel like I look forward to it. It's just a really nice feeling. Hey, you're to thank for that. It it's, it's nothing really. Yuri smiles sincerely at me. For just a moment, her timidness seems to disappear. Aw, she's really into us. Um, uh, Natsuki, sure. Hmm. Well, I can admit that it's better than last than the last one. It's nice to see that you're putting in some effort. That's good. But I still don't like this at all. Wow. It's trying too hard to be serious. Uh, what do you mean by that? Poems don't need to be all deep sounding to express something. It's going to just sound like you're forcing it unless you really don't suck at it. Honestly, do you, don't bother trying to write poems like this until you're on Yuri's level. Natsuki stops short all of a sudden. D don't tell me. Eh? Uh, you're, not, you're not just trying to impress Yuri, are you? W what are you talking about? And keep your voice down. You know, Yuri would love this kind of this angsty just because she's a talented writer doesn't mean I, I mean ooh looks like I'm in trouble I somehow struck a nerve though what I what I did is beyond me I am so done with you Natsuki shows the poem I handed her back over to me take your stupid poem if you write if you wrote it for someone else just don't show it to me what is your problem Natsuki <laughs> ouch this is what I get for letting a younger girl step into my business. Unless I was a mind reader, I was destined to be in a world of pain from the start. At least Natsuki wasn't really the girl I was trying to impress in the first place. Wow, I didn't even read her poem. She's just mad at me just because I like Yuri. Wow, she's jealous. She's definitely jealous. Alright, see Yuri. Ooh, I like this one, Donovan. It has some nice feelings in it. Ah, I'm, I'm glad. Does that mean it's better than yesterday's? Hmm, let me think. I don't know. Hold on, let me snooze. I had an alarm. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I like them both. <laughs> it's not very helpful, you know. Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go by my heart. 
If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is a pretty important part of this whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Ugh. Why don't you at least try giving it some thought? Uh, you want me to write? You want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. But you're always thinking about other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while, for real, girl. Come on. Like it's not always about everyone else. Sometimes it can be about you. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll try to keep that in mind. Well, whatever. Anyway, let's see. Oh, anyway, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Wait, sometimes I like sad poems, too. Sometimes I like a little bit of both. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Yeah. I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and happy and sad. I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug. It makes a, a nice happy rainbow. Oh my gosh, she is adorable. She is melting my heart. It's just very cute. Sayori, that's unexpectedly poetic. Eh? It, it is? Maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Donovan. I should go write that down then. You can read my poem now, okay? Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. I just realized all these poems are really long now. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach aside with my thumb and forefinger to, and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe, and I put the bottle on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My f empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally, all done. I open up, and in, in come my friends. In, the, in they come, in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after another, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Holy crap. Siori, did you really write this? Of course I did. Didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever? That was actually really good. Like, I'm going to be for real right now. That was actually a really good poem. <laughs> yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot. And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah, writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. Siori's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in your eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Who should I show my poem to next? Uh, let's do Monica. Alright. Because she's literally the last option. Hi again, Donovan. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. 
Uh, I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright! This one's good. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm, I, I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most... romantic. That's the best way to describe it. Romantic, you say? Ha <laughs> ha. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside her. Mm-hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what goes on in that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just meant that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still, defending her like that, you must be pretty into her. Eh, what do you mean? I have no idea what you're talking about. You completely misunderstood. <laughs> Come, calm down, I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one anyway. Monaco kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but... Well, there's no, not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Alright, let's take a look. Save me. Alright. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeak, squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. Uh. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? I had no idea what that even was. Uh, I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. I'm just very uncomfortable. <laughs> it's just a kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where choosing where and how to space your words could totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. The way I wrote the lines really short makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it in that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Uh, she's breaking the fourth wall. You never know when you might change your mind. Or when something unexpected ha may happen. Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Oh, uh. Okay, that was weird. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned for, t for today. So, if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Oh, okay. I think we're getting into uh, more later stuff. So... I think this is where we're gonna wrap it up for this episode cuz pretty sure like this is gonna get more in depth with the rest like probably like the end of the game I don't know but um because also that and I'm running out of time to record so so yeah that's gonna be it for this episode so I uh, thank you guys so much for watching make sure to like comment subscribe for more radical content and more Doki Doki Literature Club cuz I'm definitely gonna get, keep playing this game and I'll see you guys next time stay radical